The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic. I recently wrote an article called The Process is the Project, and it outlined the four phases of designing and building furniture, at least the way that I see it. Uh, and today what we're going to do is expand a little bit on that second phase, which is engineer the design. So basically you've come up with something that looks the way you want it to look. How does it go together? How do those joints play together? Now I'm going to be building a chest of drawers and a nightstand upcoming in the Wood Whisperer Guild, and this was an opportunity for me to look at an interesting joinery situation and just kind of explain a little bit using sketch up in a voiceover to show you exactly what my logic is to why the mortise and tenons are sized the way that they are. And you can kind of apply this logic to just about any part of a project in the future. Oh, and by the way, if you like the concept of the process is the project, uh, the graphic we made for it looks so cool, we made posters out of it. So if you want one of those, we actually have those up in our store at twwstore.com. All right, so let's talk about joinery. Hit it! Whenever designing furniture, you have to balance what you want with what's actually possible. And there's usually not just one right answer, there's a lot of different right answers. You just have to go through and play with things and see how it turns out. But the way that I look at it is it's sort of a three-step process. First, I design what I think is best for the quality of the piece, what gives it the most strength or achieves the goal we're trying to achieve with it. Um, and then you have to put that through a filter, you have to adjust for restrictions. So there might be things where one part meets another part that uh, when you look at the part alone, you don't see the problem. Put two parts together and suddenly boom, there's a problem. So you have to adjust for the restrictions of the piece and then you can simplify where it's sensible. Now having different sized tenons all over the place might seem okay in SketchUp, but once you get that into the shop, that's a real pain in the butt to execute. So getting things to be similar from one part to another is always good. So let's jump into this particular project and talk a little bit about some of the joinery, the tenons specifically. Now let's uh, take a close look because the nightstand and the dresser are pretty much the same, right? And we'll put on a um, little x-ray view here so we could see what's going on on the interior, change the face style to x-ray. And I've got a nice assortment of stuff here. There are double tenons coming in from each side. And you can see there's a little piece of the top panel that's there as well. Uh, but we're really focused on those tenons right now. So you can see they're, they're different lengths, right? And in fact, those are actually mortises because these are gonna be slip tenon joints. So let's take a close look with uh, the rest of the stuff out of the way. It makes it a little easier to see, right? Okay, different heights, different depths. So how do we arrive at that? Why did I end up with something like this? Let me change the view back to normal. And just to show you here again on the inside, this little stubby one is a little bit shorter and also a little uh, more shallow, right? The, the bigger one is definitely doing a lion's share of the work holding here. Okay, so let's go to a blank. And this is kind of where you would start, right? You would say, well, I've got my inch and three quarter by inch and three quarter leg, and I want to put a couple of uh, mortises in there. Again, it's going to be um, a slip mortise and tenon or loose tenon joinery here. So I'll just grab my measuring tool, and this is going to allow me to put layout marks where I need them. So I'm just going to say two and a half inches up. That's the mark for the top of this piece, right? The rail that adjoins it. So that's just for reference. And I want my tenon, let's say, uh, let's start about three-eighths of an inch. I mean, I just kind of pull nice numbers that make sense to me. Quarter inch, three-sixteenths, three-eighths is a little heavy, but these are big pieces, so I'll go with three-eighths here. And we'll go up from the bottom, three-eighths. Let's go in, because I want to do two tenons here, right? This is an inch and three-quarter. You can do one tenon, but I actually think two is going to be better if you can pull it off, right? So let's go... And I keep saying tenons, but really I'm talking about mortises at this point, right? So three-eighths in from the edge, three-eighths in from that edge. And I want two tenons within this space. Each tenon, I'll make it three-eighths of an inch. All right, that looks pretty good. So let's make the actual mortises here by taking the square tool and using our layout lines, which are there waiting for us. Oops, you know what? I gotta be within the component to do it. That's better. There's one. There's two. And now let's push pull this surface to actually create the mortise. Now, how deep do you go? Well, this leg is an inch and three quarters. Generally, I don't wanna go past what would be halfway through the thickness of this piece. So let's say seven eighths, just as a nice round number. That is half, all right? 
Seven eighths. We'll do this one seven eighths. All right, not too bad. Now for me, I would say that's that's close in the ballpark of the family of what would be like the ideal mortise for the uh, pieces of this size. That looks pretty good to my eye. So what's the problem? You know, well, now we have to go to that next step where we adjust for restrictions. One such restriction is what about the cross piece coming in from the front? What happens when you have the same size mortises there? All right, so here's a good example. We've got both mortises on both sides and it doesn't look too bad. It's hard to see exactly what's going on. So let's turn on the x-ray view and see what we've got. Oh boy. Now these outside mortises aren't too bad, but look what happens to these mortises. If you put a tenon through there, that tenon's gonna collide. So that is just not gonna work. So we immediately know that we have to make some changes here. A couple different things that we can do. We can shift the tenons toward the outside of the leg, giving us a little bit more buffer on the inside. Uh, we can shorten the depth of these two tenons so that they don't touch one another, right? And we can also shorten the depth of this guy if we think that's gonna be a problem too. Right, so if you look right here, this is the actual set of mortise and tenons that, uh, that we're going to be using. And I'll give you a little bit of better idea of why I made these decisions. So this guy is nice and short, but there's a secondary thing we haven't talked about yet. And that is some of the supports for the, the drawer, right? There's going to be a support that goes into a rabbit. And if this rabbit is here, there's not that much material to play with. Right? And it makes sense when you look at the rail. If this mortise were really, really high, it would interfere with this rabbit. So that's why this mortise is now chopped down to about an inch, all right, like that. The depth is pulled in by quite a bit. We're only going 3 eighths of an inch in, and that allows these two mortises to exist and coexist next to one another without being a problem. Uh, and the total length of the mortise, I did trim down a little bit. It's only an inch and a half, all right? But you see, this line up here represents the top of the adjoining rail on the side and then this is that 3 8 where we drew the start of the mortise in the original and look how much down I am from that all right so I took it in a little bit the reason for that is because we have a side panel that's going to go right in here all right so if that panel is in this groove we don't want that groove to make contact with this mortise so I brought it down a little bit so everything is a compromise all right, and whether this is one inch or an inch and an eighth or an inch and a sixteenth, that's where the third step of simplification and sensibility comes in. Um, to me, I like nice round numbers, nice re repetitive numbers, and consistent numbers throughout the piece. So if I have a one inch mortise here, anytime I need a small mortise, I'm gonna try and get that same one inch mortise. It's just gonna make it easier to batch this stuff out when the time comes. All right, so hopefully this gives you an idea of how you might adjust your tendon sizes and various joinery sizes in a sensible workflow within a project.